Yes, good morning, all. Uh, I signed up for a flex rate, not for the wheelchair. So I'm going to talk about the flex rate. Uh, to, to, to begin with, with all due respect, the TLC report earlier, I strongly disagree with all the report. Nothing, nothing true is in this report. Nothing correct, nothing true in this report. And then first, uh, I do not understand why the EL has to be in my mirror. I pay for the medallion, which means I pay for the license to, to, to do this job on the street. I did not pay for the medal uh, for the medal to have access to my mirror to have Uber 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 in there. This is outrageous. It's not acceptable. Uh, about today rules, I urge all the commissioners to vote no. Because this rule, there is nothing in this rule that benefits the driver nor the passenger. The only part that be benefits from this rule is the EL company. This rule do not benefit. We don't have nothing at all as a benefit with this rule. So I urge all the commissioners for the record to vote no, because as this rule apply today, it's not good for us, nor the passenger. You don't want to, you don't want to give all the power to the EL in this uh, in in this industry, and that's why we're moving toward we we are moving toward uh, uh, monogamy. They're going it's go, only going to be one side in charge of the business. There is it won't be no competition. Why in the world I will pay for the medallion? I will pay for the car. I will pay for the insurance. I will pay for the taxes. And have all this EL come in and charge me 40% or 50% of my hard earned income. This is it's wrong. 30 seconds this, remaining. This, this thing only happened, only happened in this industry. It won't happen nowhere else because we are not second class citizens. How in the world before the EL we were having a better life? Since the EL come in, everything has been miserable. And everything around us has been sad. We're taking less money home. Who, who say we're taking more money home? No Time way we're taking expired. more money home. We're taking less money home, and that's not okay. We need, we're working hard for a better life. We are not, why is it TLC taking us 10 steps backward every time we make one step forward. Why is it TLC doing that? It's all not right. okay. And that should stop. I and I, I urge all the commissioner today for the record, please, I urge you, please vote no on this rule. All right. And I'm Vedavi Desai, Executive Director of the New York Taxi Workers Alliance. Um, it's hard to follow after Mr. Aliyu spoke earlier. I hope that all the commissioners that are listening can really hear like the sense of, you know, pain and frustration that is runs really deep across this entire industry. I mean, the streets are just oversaturated. No, you know, we're back to the race to the bottom for drivers. For yellow cab drivers, you know, trips are still down 50% since COVID. We're now facing down congestion pricing, um, you know, in about what less than uh, two months' time. Um, meanwhile, on flex fare, as you've heard, they're getting cheated out of a dignified living, you know, per trip. I mean, even if the passenger is being charged well above the meter, but the drivers are still being paid less, and that's just not acceptable. Good morning. My name is Vedavi Desai. I am the executive director of the New York Taxi Workers Alliance. Um, I'm really stunned by the presentation that we just heard. The, in the 2019 study, from the TLC itself found that 
pay for drivers. Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm like thrown off by the background. I don't know why my own background is not showing, but I don't work for the TLC. I work for the Taxi Workers Alliance. Um, your 2019 study found that on e-hail trips, drivers could be paid as low as 20% below the metered rate. Their expenses are not being cut by 20%. You know, you're talking about the workforce that has the highest expenses across this industry and is subject to the most regulations in this industry. Yet, a, a, a you know, a percentage of their fares that you yourself claim are on the, you know, um, are growing in this industry. Why are they remaining unregulated? This is just absurd. What's going to ha and you yourself has said in your study that most of these trips are not in the outer boroughs. They're still within the central business district where the majority of taxi trips are already. Our concern would be that over time, street hails will be replaced by e-hails. But meanwhile, on these e-hails, drivers are being paid less. Your own study found that. Your study in 2023 did not even take into account the time on these trips. You only looked at mileage rates. So when you didn't conduct a full thorough study is when you concluded that, oh, driver pay is okay. When you had to look at all of the numbers, you yourself said that driver pay could be as much as 20% less than what, would, what they would make on the meter. These Rates need to be regulated. We're calling on the city council to play that role. What we need the TLC to do is provide transparency on these receipts. There is no reason why a yellow cab driver, unlike an Uber and Lyft driver, would not know how much the passenger is being charged, any third party vendor costs, any fees, and then what the commission rates are by these companies and what they themselves are being left with. And last point, there's nothing so innovative about this. For the record, Uber started in this city dispatching two yellow cabs. You know, the idea that they would have e, e hails in the yellow cab industry is nothing new. This has been going on for 10 years. In some cities in the world, Uber, for example, can only dispatch to taxis as supplemental. Upfront pricing as a concept, there's nothing wrong with it. We understand the convenience of it to the public. However, the rates Time need to be set so they don't leave drivers in poverty. The city council needs to step in. The TLC needs to require proper transparency for data on these trips. Thank you. Hello. Okay, dear commissioners, what the apps are doing are misleading passengers into believing that the price for a yellow is the price that's being promoted by their app. This price is usually more than their car's price. Yellows are promoted falsely as being more expensive. I have screenshots of this. And yellows are not being offered on trips to the airport from Manhattan, only their cars. This false pricing leads customers to believe that the app-based cars are cheaper than the yellow when they are not. Customers choose the best, cheapest option. They are led into believing they are choosing the cheapest price. This appearance degrades the yellow cab, relegating it to a second class. The reputation and value of yellows can be negatively affected here. It creates a mindset to their customers that yellows are more expensive. I suggest safeguards, a TLC, I suggest some safeguards. A TLC insignia or logo on the price being promoted in the app for yellow. If it has your logo, then it's the authentic taxi price. If it doesn't, then it's the price of yellow only in the app. If this rule is passed without safeguards, the rule that is supposed to benefit yellow will not but will benefit the app-based companies. If your objective is to help Yellow, please make sure that the apps will not use this to, to abuse taxes. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. 
Hi, uh, good morning. My name is Gulam Talukdar. I am the Medellian owner and uh, also I am a uh, member of the Taxi Worker Alliance. We like the trip, uh, e-hill trip, but those trips are too cheap. And, uh, you know, like my uh, provider is uh, very phone, that's been carb. We, we, we don't know how much uh, uh, Uber paying to the very phone and how much we get paid. And on top of that, when we go for pickup, uh, uh, pick up the passenger, you know, they cancel the trip sometimes. Uh, in Uber, they have cancellation fee. We don't got anything, you know. And on top of that, we like our fare in the, um, our EOLO cab meter fare, no less than that. For example, you guys still see, they pass the law, our DFK fare is $70 plus uh, congestion price this, that. Sometimes for Manhattan, they give like JFK Airport $50. They are undermining TLC law. You know, that's not fair. We want our our taxi fare, uh, uh, EOLO cab meter fare as a fare of the EHEL free. Um, um, and uh, like, you know, over the Zoom, I cannot explain to you everything, but I have the receipt and, you know, and everything, if you guess us, give us a call so we can show, and our union has a lot of data which will provide what you are talking about. So is making a permanent e-health trip as per the um, Uber calculation is not gonna be work because Uber uh, EOLO cap, uh, like let's believe uh, some wheelchair accessible vehicle is cost right now $80,000 plus insurance, mortgage, Uber has less insurance versus Yolo Cab has worker comp and uh, regular insurance much more expensive. So you cannot compare Yolo Cab and Uber, same thing, two, are two different thing, apple and orange. So we want our meter Yolo Cab fare as a e-hell fare. On top of 30 that- 30 seconds remaining. Another thing I want to talk about, like let's believe, Sometimes they disperse, uh, send us an offer fair to the uh, New Jersey, $28, $30. But Uber, they summons another fare to the New Jersey to here. They may be covered, but we don't cover. So you have to review everything uh, and, uh, um, we, uh, and uh, provide us our EOLO uh, meter fare as a e-health fare. Good morning. My name is Ali Langley. I'm a staff attorney at the New York Taxi Workers Alliance. Today, you've begun to hear from our members about the importance of regulating driver pay on e-hail trips and how the lack of regulation has led to drivers facing significant underpayment for e-hail trips. We're calling on the city council to regulate driver pay. Meanwhile, the TLC must support the city council in its efforts to regulate driver pay by providing a detailed and thorough data analysis regarding the impact of e-hail trips on income. Um, today, I'll be focusing my comments on the FlexFare report from September 23, um, which provided a lot of the basis for the presentation you heard today. Um, there were significant gaps and methodological flaws that led to its wildly incorrect conclusion that flex fare trips have not negatively impacted driver pay. Uh, the TLC must go back to this data and correct these errors so that the city council can move ahead with the regulation of driver pay in a rational data informed way. Um, first, as Bear v. Desai noted earlier today, the June 2019 FlexFair report initially noted that flex fare trips could pay up to 20% less than those on the meter. Um, that report ended by recommending the establishment of um, driver fee and pay transparency rules similar to FHV drivers. Um, the TLC has pre presented nothing um, either in its September 2023 report or its presentation today to demonstrate that uh, driver's general pay has changed or that these measures are not needed now. In fact, the September 2023 report has less analysis of driver pay than the June 2019 one. The September 2023 report only looks at driver pay per mile, um, while the June 2019 report looked at both per mile and per time. Um, and as noted, uh, time is an essential component of driver pay as it compensates drivers for time spent in traffic. 
um, the TLC has to consider both factors before reaching any conclusions about um, the equivalency of the pay. Uh, the report also relies heavily on the fact that, on average, e-hail trips pay more per distance than meter trips. However, um, the data in the report shows that the large majority of e-hail trips actually pay less per mile than street hail trips. Um, and you could see that in the chart shared today by Mr. D. Giovanni in the presentation. The average was bumped up because one e-hail provider who provides only 13% of the overall trips has a significantly higher per mile revenue, but all other providers um, pay less than, 30 um, seconds remaining. than um, what drivers would receive on the meter. Um, in addition, the report also relies on data from before and after the fare raise without discussing the impact of um, these on the averages. Um, and it doesn't provide a discussion of trips dispatched by Uber. Given Uber's prominence in the market, it's important we see these trips broken out as a subcategory of those dispatched by Curve and Arrow. These significant oversights have to be corrected by the TLC um, before any further regulatory um, action is taken and the TLC must support the city council in its efforts to regulate driver pay. Thank you.